So now that we have the SDK configured and know what's going on under the hood, let's go ahead and uh, establish a use case. So you, here you can see I'm loading my application. It took quite a bit of time uh, for the tools and the inventory to load here. Uh, that's gonna be the first thing that we're gonna debug. And second, we're gonna go ahead and uh, trigger a checkout. And here we have a request that went out to a backend and there was some error. Uh, we'll investigate that later as well. Uh, so here, I'm just gonna reload this one more time to show you all what's going on. There's a request out to the backend. It took some time to load it. Here you can see a transaction got shipped up as well uh, to Sentry. And then when we hit a checkout here, another transaction got shipped up in addition to also an error, which we'll uh, link up and talk about and discuss as well. Now that we have transaction data shot up to Sentry and know what's going on under the hood, let's go to Sentry.io to view this data and debug this use case. So by default, you're going to be taken to the issues list. But what we're doing here is interacting with transaction data, so let's go and head over to the performance homepage. Here is the main view where we can search and browse for transaction data. We can filter by any search conditions or choose from a list of sortable transactions in the table. We can also drill down on this data to narrow in on the time frame as well. So here, just for example, let's go ahead and just view this subset of events here. And what we see here are all the transactions, the projects that they're associated with, the transactions per minute, P50, P95, as well as failure rate, app dex, user impact, and user misery score, which is defined here as well. On the top here, we're going to have two tables that we can see side by side. App dex is generally a good place to start out with. Uh, so in case uh, you forgot what that means or don't know what that means, here we have a tool to help, to help you. So here in this case, app dex is the ratio of both satisfactory and tolerable response times to all response times. And we may want to view that to all the transaction load that we're seeing. So here we have uh, TPM, transactions per minute, or we might want to see the P95 duration, which is the duration that 95% of transactions are faster than. In this case, we want to debug the page load transaction and figure out exactly what the slowdown was from there. And then, as mentioned, we'll move on to the checkout flow uh, and, and debug there as well. So just to start off with, uh, I know that this was in my front end project, so I'm going to add that to filter. I can see all the various uh, transactions here. And this was the page load request for this URL. So search and drill down. And then clicking into this will take me to the summary view here. On the transaction summary page, we're going to be presented with various types of information relevant to this transaction, where we can understand its overall health. We'll find graphs, we'll find facet maps, as well as related errors, and the table of the specific transactions, which we'll drill down in a moment. So first, the graph. By default, uh, it shows a uh, breakdown of the duration, but we can also view a duration percentiles, as well as get a histogram of the latency as well. On the right-hand side, we're going to have the performance-related metrics that we were referencing earlier. Uh, so app decks, user misery, transactions per minute, and highlighting this will showcase uh, that in this specific point of time as well. Let's take a deeper look at the graph uh, and switch back to duration breakdown. So now what we can see are all the different P100s uh, all the way down to the 50. We can see that a release was introduced at this point in time. And, you know, we've spiked up to 11 second load times uh, that are uh, affecting pretty much everyone here. So let's go ahead and, and debug further here. So in this case, I've already filtered by the slowest transactions. So I'm going to go ahead and click in. And now I am on the transaction event details page where I can see the entire transactions and all the spans associated with it and other information. So now we've drilled down on the transaction and are on the transaction event details page. And here we can see the entire transaction and the associated span tree. We also have an associated mini map, which allows us to drill into any time frame if, if necessary. Here in this case, we already have a glaring culprit, which is this pink box, this get tools request, which we're going to debug in one moment. Underneath the span tree, we have breadcrumbs, and this is uh, exactly what you're used to with error monitoring. So what happened in the application prior to the transaction? And underneath that is all the additional information picked up by the SDK that's relevant to understanding what's going on uh, with this transaction and who it's coming from. On the right-hand side, we'll have some aggregate information. So we already saw that the glaring pink box is, uh, is the, the culprit here. It happens to be an HTTP request 
which took 99% of the time here uh, in, in regards to the whole transaction. Underneath that, we'll also have the event tag details if you need to understand who exactly the event is coming from as well. So now let's go ahead and drill down into the glaring pink box here. Uh, so the tools request, and then go ahead and click view span. And now what I'm looking at is the transaction event details for the get tools backend request here. So you can see it hit the server and here uh, it went to fetch all the tools, initiated the connection to the DB, and then running the query took a whopping 10 seconds. So this is what we should drill down on. We can also see this right here that 50% of the time was taken by running that query and that this is probably the optimization that needs to be made or the investigation uh, that needs to be kicked off in regards to improving the performance here. So what we've done uh, just in summary is we started from the front end, right? Got to this transaction, figured out that this was taking 10.9 seconds, clicked in and then traced this to the back end here where we saw what was going on with that layer and here the query from that 10.9 seconds consumed 10.8 seconds. So now from here, the backend developer would presumably fix this and what we would see essentially is in this, uh, let me just kind of refresh out here uh, to the last 24 hours, is a new release that would have been created somewhere around here and all of these times drop. So to tie this all together, I'm gonna to start from the beginning real quick and go from there. So we started at the front end page load transaction. We figured out what some of our slowest transactions were. We're able to understand the state of things here, look at all of the performance related metrics on the right hand rail, and then drilling down into the front end side of things, figuring out that this is where the most time is being consumed. And this is why uh, the user was not able to see uh, the inventory and was presented with a loading screen drilling down into the associated backend request uh, to our Flask backend and figuring out what exactly was slow and any other information that would allow us to investigate that piece of code to potentially optimize and fix, thus seeing the performance and the times going back down. So let's move on to our second use case, which was the, ch the checkout flow where we added a bunch of things to cart and click checkout and we had an error as a result uh, of a backend request. So here, what we've done is we've instrumented our checkout to create a transaction and we could create any of the spans accordingly as well. So here is some sample code very resembling of that. Here we've started up the transaction, then you would have any of your business logic in between that and additionally spin up any spans as necessary and when you're done, go ahead and conclude all of that and that will ship up the transaction. Uh, if this is not done, then uh, once things become idle, the transaction will then be flushed out with all of the appropriate information contained in it. So let's go back to the performance homepage and figure out exactly what's going on with our checkout transactions. So here I've initiated a search over the last 30 days on all of the checkout transactions. What we are going to do is start at the front end and drill down into a specific transaction. And as expected, here we can see it's issuing a request out to our checkout endpoint on our Flask backend. Let's go ahead and view that span and go into Python Flask territory. Right off the bat, we can see this red font and it says that there's an error associated with this transaction event. So clicking into here, we can see that an error occurred in the span. I pulled it up here up in a new tab and now I'm looking at the error event also associated with the transaction event. And as you would expect from Sentry, all the details, the who, what, when, where, why, this error likely caused that slow transaction or had something to do with it, and this commit, it, this commit caused it all. So what we've done is shown that this transaction was possibly slow or likely unsuccessful because of this error and you probably want to investigate this as well. So all your errors, all your transactions in one place so you can understand not just application health in regards to, you know, is it working? Am I having errors or crashes? But is it slow? Are all of these things related?